Hello everyone, welcome back to the most amazing top 10. I am joined today by my good friend Charlotte. Hello. I'm not actually sure we've ever done a video together, have we? I think we've done a couple, maybe? maybe. I don't know. Maybe a while ago on IO, which mm. Charlotte is the host of. Yes, I am. And what do you want them to do? <laughs> <laughs> If you need a place to get your news on YouTube, definitely subscribe to Inform Overload. We post things that honestly you actually want to hear about. So if you're sick of the same old news cycle, definitely subscribe to Inform Overload. Yeah, if you're sick of me and Rebecca and Landon, go and check out Charlotte. Come hang out with me. It's refreshing. Anyway guys, Charlotte is here to join me today with another video in our Urban Legends series. And this is Top 10 Scary Scottish Urban Legends. Let's do this. Mm. Starting things off at number 10, we've got the Gorballs Vampire. Back in September of 1954, the children from Gorballs in Glasgow went on a monster hunt looking for the creature that killed their two friends and drank their blood. For three nights, hundreds of children between 4 and 14 carried knives, stakes, clubs and crucifixes and stormed into the creepy necropolis graveyard known locally as the City of the Dead. They were hunting a vampire that was said to be 7 feet tall with blood red eyes and sharp iron teeth. The children called him the Gorballs Vampire. This was actually a real event. On September 23rd, Constable Alex Deep Rose was called to the City of the Dead because of a disturbance and found hundreds of armed kids looking for a vampire. Local news outlets picked up the story. Headlines said things like, amazing scene as hundreds of children rush cemetery. But the report about the two missing children ended up being false. The police heard of no missing children reports at the time. The Gorbals vampire was dismissed as an urban legend and some say the kids were inspired by American comic books like Tales from the Crypt and The Vault of Horror. All right, next up on number nine now, guys. We have the Devils in the Bins. The House of the Bins is an old Scottish ancestral home. General Tam Daliel was the head of the Daliel family in the 17th century. Now, while he lived there, Tam claimed that every night the devil visited him in his home for a game of cards. He said the devil usually won. Now, in retrospect, this might have been a good thing. You see, one night the devil appeared as usual, and as usual, the devil and Tam sat down to play cards. This night was different, though. This night, for the first time ever, Tam seemed to be getting the upper hand. He was winning. As the game went on, the devil got more and more angry about this. Eventually, when the game looked lost for him, he flew into a rage. The devil then threw a single marble at Tam. It missed and instead landed in the sergeant's pond outside the house. Now, for many years, people laughed at Tam and dismissed his story as insane. Then, over 200 years later, the pond outside was apparently drained and what should they find buried in the mud at the bottom but a single shiny marble. He lost his marble! Z. One marble. One marble? At number eight, we've got Abandoned Annie. The city chambers is a famous building in Edinburgh with ancient alleys that run beneath. The streets below the city chambers are said to be haunted and they attract psychics, ghost hunters, and mediums. This is because back in the 16th and 17th centuries, this particular area of Edinburgh was hit extremely hard by the plague. The streets used to be littered with bodies and sick people who were banished and left for dead. After the 18th century, the abandoned homes and alleys were sealed, but that doesn't stop people from venturing down there. There have been many strange noises and sightings reported but most notably a psychic claims to have come into contact with the ghost of a young girl named Annie. Abandoned Annie is a story that began in 1992 after a Japanese psychic called Eiko Gibo went to the close as a part of a documentary on paranormal activity. When the group were touring the area, she came across a room that she at first was too afraid to enter. She said the room had a terrible feeling of sickness, hunger and cold. But then Eiko went inside the room because she said she was invited by the ghost of a little girl named Annie who had died of the plague. Annie grabbed her hand and said that she had been abandoned by her family and that she had lost her doll. Aiko later went back to the room with a Barbie for Annie to play with and since then, visitors to Annie's room are told to bring a gift for her. There is now a pile of toys created by people who have visited her room. To this day, people report feeling sick, uneasy and cold while visiting Annie's room, despite the fact that there is no historical record of any girl named Annie. And the story has been dismissed as a popular urban myth. An urban myth that actually has a happy purpose, apparently. Along with toys, people leave money for Annie, and at the end of every year, the money is counted and given to the sick kids' hospital. So far, Annie has raised more than 45,000 pounds for other sick children. Next up at number seven now, guys, we have the A75. Now, that is the name of what's said to be the most haunted road in Scotland, bar none. It runs through the county of Dumfriesshire and has been a hub of reports of supernatural activity over the years. It's actually attracted paranormal investigators 
investigators to it from all over the world. Kathleen Crone is the founder of Mostly Ghostly, great name by the way. Now she said there have been screaming hags, eyeless phantoms and a menagerie of unearthly creatures witnessed on this famous road. In 1962, perhaps one of the most famous sightings occurred on the road. Derek and Norman Ferguson were driving along the road when a large hen apparently flew into the windscreen of their car. They then saw huge cats and other monstrous creatures pass by them as well as a phantom furniture van, whatever that is, all of which vanished into thin air. In the years since then the number of stories has grown to the point where some truck drivers actually avoid the A75 altogether. Alright it is time for number 6, The Boneless. The true story of The Boneless comes from the Shetland Islands, a group of small islands off the coast of Scotland where the inhabitants were once terrorized by a ghostly blob. Yes you heard that correctly. Stories about a ghostly apparition called the boneless and sometimes a frittening have been whispered on the Shetland Island for years now. It's based on an account found in the book Shetland Traditional Lore by Jesse Saxby. Although no one could describe the apparition properly, people called it the boneless because witnesses say it looked like a giant glowing white blob. Others said it looked like a jellyfish or a slimy white cloud. The boneless would appear pressed up against windows and it never made a sound. It could move though. Apparently it could move faster than a dog. If you had happened to find yourself face to face with the boneless, you would cower in fear and often die of fright. There's a story about one boy who was dragged by the boneless to the edge of the cliff. He described it as smelling like rotting flesh. As he heard the waves crashing below, he grabbed the rocks and hung on for life. The boneless rolled off the cliff and disappeared, and the boy managed to drag himself back to his home to tell his parents. And the boy managed to drag himself back to his home to tell his parents. Next at number 5, we've got the haunting of Castle Stewart. The story goes like this. The Earl of Moray inherited Castle Stewart from his father. He wanted to rent it out but he couldn't because the castle had such a bad reputation for being haunted. So the Earth tried to improve the castle's reputation by offering a reward to any man who was brave enough to spend the night in the castle. News about the reward spread and eventually four men agreed. A minister, an elder in the Presbyterian church, a local shoemaker and the last was a large man named Rob Angus. The deal was each of the men had to spend an entire night alone in a haunted room. Once they were inside the door would be locked and wouldn't be unlocked locked until the next morning. The minister fell asleep in the room and had a dream about a blood splattered man who sat down next to him. When he woke up, no one was there. The elder had a similar experience. While he was reading his bible, the door to the room sprang open and in walked a man covered in blood. The man drew his dagger on the elder who fainted. He was found the next morning in complete shock. When it was the shoemaker's turn, he heard the door to the room open. A tall man with hooves for feet appeared in the doorway. The being jumped at the shoemaker and he fainted in terror. He was found unconscious on the floor the next morning. And lastly it was Rob Angus's turn. Rob Angus was a big strong Scotsman who said he wasn't afraid of anything. As the servant closed the door to his room he said, you will find me as I am or dead. When the servant returned in the morning, the furniture in the room was broken and all over the place, but there was no sign of Rob. But then the servant looked out the window and saw Rob Angus lying on the ground, dead. At some point, Rob Angus fell out of the window or was pushed. Various sightings and reports of paranormal activity over the years have given Castle Stewart the reputation of being one of the most haunted castles in the world. Coming at number 4 now guys, we have Arthur's Seat Coffin. Coming at number 4 now guys, we have the Arthur's Seat Coffins. This one comes from Edinburgh. Arthur's Seat is a rocky hill there. So of a landmark if you will. One day in 1836, five local boys discovered an entrance to a small cave on the rugged northeastern face of that famous hill. There they found some intricately carved miniature figures set in coffins. I know, that's incredibly creepy. The 17 coffins had actually been left undisturbed for an unknown amount of time. Each casket contained expertly carved human effigies creepily dressed in very unique clothing. They had painted black boots on and twisted facial expressions. In the years since then, these creepy coffins have defied all attempts to explain them. This has opened the door to a number of creepy urban legends surrounding them. The most popular is that they were created to commemorate the 17 victims of the notorious Edinburgh murderers and Grave robbers, Burke and Hare. I'm no relation to that Burke though. Okay, maybe somewhere along the line. Awkward. Getting close now, at number 3 we've got Sonny Bean, Scotland's most famous cannibal. Not much is known about Sonny Bean, but he was said to have been born in the late 15th century. He married a woman who was said to be a witch and moved to Benane Cave in Ayrshire with his new wife. Sonny supported his wife by being a robber, but rather than risk being caught, Sonny murdered his victims and disposed of the evidence by eating the remains. The couple started having children, a lot of them, 14 to be exact, and fed them a high protein diet of human flesh. Eventually the children grew up and had their own children 
children born of incest, and before long, the cave was inhabited by an entire extended family of 48 cannibals, all with a taste for humans. The family remained undiscovered and would ambush unfortunate victims, steal their money, and eat them. Local authorities would find decaying body parts, sometimes pickled, washed up on the surrounding beaches. Eventually, King James of Scotland heard about the Sawneys and orchestrated a 400 men manhunt. They found the cave full of human remains and stolen valuables. Sawney Bean was reportedly executed for the mass murder of over 1,000 people, but most historians believe that Sawney never existed, and his story was nothing more than an urban legend. Moving on to number two now, we have Gilly Do. I think I'm pronouncing that right. In Scottish legend, he's a solitary Scottish male fairy that lives alone in the forest. He disguises himself in trees so as not to be seen by humans. His light green skin and long branch arms make it almost impossible for people to spot him. However, it's important to note that the Gilly Do is usually only this elusive to adults. You see, he's been known to appear and interact with friendly children. Now, you should know that doesn't mean that every interaction is a good one. He has been known to prey on people lost in the woods, killing or enslaving them. Perhaps the strangest thing I read about this creature is that he is said to collect the teeth of children to perform protective magic on them. This has led some people to believe that the Gilly Do actually gave birth to the legend of the Tooth Fairy. A much lighter story. I think we can all agree. I don't think the Tooth Fairy has killed or enslaved anyone. If you know otherwise, let me know. And finally, number one now, we have the Mackenzie Poltergeist. This is perhaps the most famous ghost story in all of Scotland. The Black Mausoleum is the name of a tomb in Edinburgh's Greyfriars Cemetery and has become famous as the home of an evil paranormal entity. Over the years, visitors have reported feeling extreme hot spots and cold spots. They leave with cuts, bruises, and burns on their body. Photographic evidence for the legend includes pictures of these injuries, as well as pictures from inside the tomb that some claim show an unidentified shape. Others have reported seeing a white figure in the dark, smelling strange odours, and hearing knocking noises under the ground and even from inside the tomb itself. If that wasn't enough for you, locals have gone to the grave some days to find dead animals in front of the Black Mausoleum. Some people have even claimed to have been possessed, which led to the grounds being exercised twice, both unsuccessfully, apparently. In the past few decades, it seems as though the Mackenzie Poltergeist has begun to spread. Poltergeist activity has been reported in four different houses around the graveyard, and in 2002, a large fire broke out in the residences behind George Mackenzie's tomb. Dang, Scotland is a really scary place, isn't it? It is. I've only been a few times, and uh, maybe this is why. I think I just kind of innately felt that it was too scary for me. Just too spooky. I think it's all the castles and like the fog. England has that too, though. Oh. Yeah, England's scary. That's why I'm here in Canada, <laughs> pretty much. Thank you so much to Charlotte for helping me today in this video. Don't forget to go and check out IO. There's going to be a link in the description box, Down below. possibly in the comments. Also, you can just search for it, I guess. Yeah. Pretty, pretty big channel now. Yeah, we're at 1.1 million subscribers, so we got we got some fans. Go and check it out. All right, thanks as always, guys, for watching. My name is Danny Burke. And I'm Charlotte Delray. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.